click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Welcome back. This is the first lesson of section seven. In this section, we'll focus our attention on dashboards. And like many things in Monday.com, dashboards are assembled from reusable building blocks. So we'll spend a bit of time during this first lesson to establish a baseline understanding of the dashboarding capability. Then we'll dedicate one lesson to the details of two specific widgets before moving on to an exercise. So let's get into it. What exactly are dashboards in Monday.com? In the normal day-to-day -day sense, dashboards are highly visual representations of the overall state of a system. Typically, dashboards contain charts and graphs and summarized information. But isn't that exactly what we did with board views during an earlier section? Strictly speaking, yes, but there is a difference and the difference lies in the source of the data. For board views, the data comes from the main table of the board itself. When working with dashboards, the data can come from one or more other boards. This is a long way of saying that dashboards allow us to aggregate and visualize data from our Monday.com boards. The second important aspect of dashboards is that dashboards typically consist of multiple different widgets presented together to give the viewer an overall idea of the lay of the land. There are many different types of widgets and each is purpose-built to present data in a specific way. Let's have a look at some widgets. I'll open the bookings dashboard that we built during lesson three of section two. It feels like a million years ago, doesn't it? Originally, we called the dashboard the bookings dashboard, but our dashboard will connect different boards and should serve a broader function in the guest house. So I suggest we duplicate the bookings dashboard and rename the new version to guest house dashboard. Our dashboard already contains two types of widgets. Firstly, we have a numbers widget. This is used to collect data, perform calculations of some sort, and present a single number on the dashboard. This is quite similar to the speedometer on your car. Secondly, we've got a chart widget that presents our booking data as a bar chart. But what are some of the other types of widgets? Let's have a quick overview. If I click on the Add Widget button, a typical drop-down list appears showing the basic widget types. In addition to number and charts, which we've discussed already, the following basic widget types are available. A battery widget, which is a handy widget to display total progress in a simple view. Effectively, it visualizes all your statuses inside the battery outline. Then there's also the Gantt widget, which is really the same as the Gantt view that we worked with in section five, with one minor difference that when used on a dashboard, the Gantt widget can include data from multiple boards. The last two items in the dropdown both take us to the widget center. So let me open that up. The widget center provides a long list of widgets that you can use on your dashboards, broken down by categories. One of the categories is Apps by Monday, which is a set of apps created by the Monday team. But we also have a section titled Discover Apps from the Marketplace, where third-party widgets are provided. So in short, there's a vast array of widgets that you can add to your dashboards, depending on your specific requirements. Instead of trying to cover each widget in detail, let's rather focus on the generic concepts of the dashboard itself. Notice right at the top, there's a switch that you can flip between view mode and edit mode. This allows us to clean up the dashboard when presenting it. All it really does is remove all the editing tools. At the top left of the dashboard is where you specify which boards provide the sample data for this dashboard. To add an extra board, simply click on the button and add your boards. Since our dashboard will provide overview information about the whole business, we need to select a few boards. We'll pick the bookings board, the maintenance board, the cleaning schedule board, and the guest feedback board. To add widgets to the dashboard, we use the Add Widget button, which we've discussed already. Once you add a widget, it's placed on the dashboard canvas, which is the bigger part of the screen marked out as a grid. Let me temporarily add another widget to show how this works. Once the widget is added to the canvas, you can drag it to the desired spot using the handles. You can also resize the widget according to your needs using the bottom right corner. And of course, you can rename the widget. Lastly, what's quite important on widgets is the ability to view in full screen mode. 
To do that, you click on the widget menu and select full screen. Most importantly, all widgets include a settings menu, which you can configure the details of the individual widget. Of course, the settings are different for each type of widget, so we can't go through all of them here. And lastly, you should note the filtering at the top right of the dashboard. These work very similar to the filters found in the board views, but they filter the data across multiple sources. That's about all I can show you on dashboards without digging into the details of any individual widgets. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.